Hey, what's up guys? Aaron from Clever Programmer here again. And today, uh, I feel like making an email address text scraper. Just felt like doing something small and simple. So yeah, let's get right to it. So if I want to be able to search um, a bunch of text and pick out some emails from it, I'm gonna need something called regular expressions. Uh, in Python, this library is uh, just RE. So I'm just gonna type import RE, just like that. And uh, a quick explanation of regular expressions, it's a way to specify different patterns in string and text, in strings and text, so that you can match cert those certain patterns and then pick things out. So an email address follows a very specific pattern, right? Uh, there's some letters and numbers and whatnot, and then there's an ampersand, and then some more letters and numbers and whatnot, and then a period, and then some more letters and numbers. And that's what makes an email address. That's what a human would recognize as an email address. So things like these, if you can pick apart those little rules, like the structure, the pattern of something, some entity, in this case, an email address, then we could specify and describe that pattern with uh, regular expressions. And then once we do that, then we can um, run the regular expression over the entire text file and basically just pick out everything in there that matches the the regular expression. In this case, they would be email addresses. So that was kind of a roundabout way of explaining it, but I hope you got it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go kind of fast, but I'm gonna explain like a little bit here and there, just um, smoothing smoothing my way up to uh, the full complicated regular expression that will actually pick out email addresses. So let's just start with something simple. Uh, first, I'm gonna need some text. So let's just type out a random string, literally a random string. <laughs> okay. And um, next we are going to create a regular expression pattern. So we'll call this variable pattern equals um, call the regular expression library. And there's this function or method uh, called compile. And what compile will do is it will take a, a string in that describes our pattern, our regular expression pattern, and then it will create an object in it, an, an object from it, and put it in pattern. So the first one I'm gonna do is literally just uh, this, a random string. The reason I'm doing this is because I just wanna show you how regular expressions work. So if I type in something like this, if this is my actual, actual regular expression, what it's gonna search for in the text is this text exactly. So since I type these exactly the same, this is actually going to match this entire thing. And when I run this pattern over this text variable, it's going to spit out this match because this, um, this matches this. Or I should actually, I should say this portion of the text satisfies what this pattern says. So let's do this real quick. Uh, I got the pattern, and then I believe I need to call, um, uh, let's call it result equals um, pattern dot, I believe it's search, yeah, search, and then text. So what's happening here is I have um, my text here, so I wanna search my text, using this pattern. So this using this pattern, I'm gonna search for the text and then any results we get back, I'm just gonna stick in this result variable. So let's run this. Uh, oh, I need one more print statement actually. Uh, bear with me, I'm doing this uh, on the fly. All right, uh, print result. So it will print the results we get. It should print out this. Let's see what happens. I could be completely wrong. Um, sad truth of life. But hey, look. So we get this object, it's actually called a match object. Um, if you don't know what an object is, uh, that's okay. Uh, if you do though, then it's, this is just an object and one of, one of its attributes is called match. And the match here is actually a string called a random string because this is what it found in the text in the text string. This is the, the match it found over here. If you don't know what an object is, just forget about it. Um, basically all, all you need to look for is it says match equals this, so anything that is right here, that is in this, like right next to match, that means it found it in the text. So that's pretty cool. Now let's uh, let's try something else because that's kind of boring. This is just a, a static kind of regular expression. Now let's change it up. So actually what I wanna do is, um, you can also use special characters in regular expressions. So if I put some brackets here, and let's say I put A, or actually A, B, or C. 
the, um, this is better for explaining it. If I put it like this, this will mean this entire highlighted portion here is looking for a single letter that can be either A, B, or C, uppercase. It's case sensitive. So if it can be A, B, or C, um, and nothing else, then that's what it takes to satisfy it. So this is going to um, look for a single letter that is either A, B, or C. And the very first letter here is a capital A, and A is A, B, or C. So this is actually going to be the only match when we run it. Let's just try this. It should only have A here instead of an entire a random string. Let's run it. And hey, look, it worked. Uh, the only match is A. Now, you can actually put as much as you want in between these brackets. You, I think you can go as long as you want. I never actually tried, but I mean, if it gets too long, it gets kind of messy anyways, and it just, eh, yeah. Um, it's, it's nicer to try to keep things concise. I can put multiple letters in here. Like, I could also put uh, a lowercase r, um, a lowercase r, um, or D or M. So that's kind of like three letters in random. Um, let's try run this and see what pops out. It should just be R, and I am correct. The reason it's just R is because this search function, it only searches for the first match, the very first match, and then it stops. So it it terminates once it finds its first match. So the first match here, it can be either an R, either a, a D, or an M, and this is the first one that matches, an R. Even though D and M also match, it found R first, and so R was considered the match. So this pattern object got, um, I mean, sorry, this result object got created and its match attribute was set to R because that was the first one it found. So as, as you can uh, you can assume, I can really put anything I want in here. This would still just return R because, um, actually, would it not? Yeah, there's no capital A in here. The only thing that's be um, before this is a capital A. So the only time it would change is if I put a capital A here, and then since capital A matches here before R does, then capital A would actually be the match. And yep, that's exactly what I thought. Oh, let's get rid of all this gibberish. Um, another cool thing you can do is, like I said, A, B, C, you could go like that, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You can also just, um, instead of A, B, C, you can also just put in a range like A, A to C, which is the same as A, B, C, or A to Z, which is the entire alphabet in lowercase. Also what you can do is actually chain these these ranges. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna run this and since R is the first lowercase letter, R should be the only match again. And yep, just as expected. All right, we can also add a uppercase just by going like this. Now it'll match all upper, lowercase and uppercase letters. So since capital A comes first and capital A is within in this one single letter um, criteria that we specified here, uh, then A will actually be printed out. And yep, right again. All right, so I've, I've kind of drilled this idea in. I might be uh, droning on, boring you guys. But if you're still listening, now it gets a little more interesting because if we add a plus sign after this, what the plus sign does basically says, whatever comes before it, I can have one or more of those. So instead of only matching a single character like we have now, um, I can actually match um, multiple ones. So I could actually detect an entire word. Uh, this time, it's only gonna be A again because it's going to find the first entire string of one or more letters of lowercase or uppercase. In that case, it's just A. Actually, let's delete A. So now it's just random string. Um, so if this is going to search for one or more lower or uppercase letters as long as I want, and then it stops at a space because this doesn't count as a upper or lowercase letter, this space. So it's just going to get these six lowercase letters and that will be the very first match and then it'll stop. So let's run this and see what happens. And yeah, random pops out. So pretty cool, right? I can also put uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc. But I'm just going to put 0 through 9. So now, now what this will do is it will find anything... Um, um, anything that has lowercase, uppercase, or numbers in it, one or more, one or more of them, until it's not satisfied. So I, I could actually put some, some capital letters in here now, some random ones, some numbers, and this will still match because everything in this entire string is either a lowercase letter, is either an uppercase letter, or a digit from zero to nine, as you can see here. It's just when we reach this space, it is not satisfied anymore. So this one or this one or more plus sign thingy that we applied to this whole thing in the brackets doesn't work anymore. So actually this entire thing will be be matched. And yeah, what do you know? 
pretty cool, right? So now that you understand a little bit of those things, I'm going to move on. Um, once you have these pieces, let's think about what a email address actually looks like. So an email address is going to have, um, or let's let's just yeah, random string. Um, let's just make a, a random email address so that we can test it out. So let's just say my name one two three at website.com. Looks like an email address to me. So let's just do that and then just add some some more random text because I am lacking creativity today. But now we have this entire string here, all this text, and we have one single um, email here and we wanna pick out this entire thing. So if we ran this, it would just return random again because that's the first mesh that it gets, but we don't want that. We actually want to pick out this email address instead of this random string. So how could we do that? Well, um, another thing you can do with regular expressions is um, actually just use characters. So if I just put an ampersand here, just an ampersand, actually it's going to look for the first match of this. And since there's one here, it's actually going to pick out this ampersand when I run this. Let's run it and see what happens. Uh, yep, the match is an ampersand. Let's, uh, it's at website. If I put at website, it's going to search for that exactly. And then it'll say at website because that's the first time it found at website. Um, but since an email address has a uh, ampersand in it, uh, this is very easy to uh, to build this pattern structure. So just like before, we had all lowercase letters, all uppercase letters, all digits, one or more, and then um, after that, that satisfies like this portion here, my name one two three, and then after as many letters um, or numbers that we like, uppercase or lowercase, in any order we please, it's followed by an ampersand. That, like that's what an email has, okay? And then after the ampersand, what happens again? Yet again, we have as many lowercase, uppercase, or numbers we, we want. So we can literally just copy and paste this, same thing, this chunk, and just paste it again. So you see this part here and this part here are exactly the same. See, it's auto-highlighting for me because they're exactly the same. That's really cool. Okay, then what follows this uh, website portion? Uh, a period. So we could just put a period, but uh, actually there's, there's this little weird special thing called you need to escape certain um, punctuation and um, symbols when you are coding. It's If you don't understand, it's, it's a little bit hard to explain. I'm not gonna explain it now, but just take my word for it. Um, to get to actually detect a pyramid, uh, <laughs> a pyramid, a period, we have to put a backslash before, and this is called escaping the period. So this is actually considered a unit, and this will actually be interpreted as just a period because this, back, this backslash says, treat this period as an actual period instead of doing something else. Um, we would also have to escape this if we actually wanted to find a plus sign in our string, we'd actually have to, I guess I am explaining escape sequences a little bit, but if you put a backslash here, this would actually search for a plus sign literally in, in the string instead of applying this plus sign to these brackets. And same thing with these brackets. If you actually want to search for actual brackets instead of having this weird, um, this thing here where you can have like all this stuff inside, you would actually have to put uh, backslashes before each of these brackets to actually check for these brackets. So that's what that does. That's the reason we need that for the period. So just uh, just take my word for it. This will be considered a period. This, this here is equal to this period here. And then again, after the period, what do we have? Um, I don't think actually think you can have numbers. I'm not exactly sure of all the possible email addresses you can have, but I think it's only lowercase letters and uppercase letters. All right, and uh, one or more, of course. Don't forget that. So I think that's the entire regular expression. So we have um, as many lowercase and uppercase um, letters and digits as you want, one or more, one or more, followed by an ampersand. Again, oops, again. Same thing, and then a period, and then just lower, then just some letters after. So that is what I believe an email address should look like. Let's try to run this and see if this gets printed out. My name one two three at website dot com. Hopefully it does. And run, and hey, what do you know? It actually worked. Um, stuff rarely works the first time, so things are going flawlessly right now, um, relatively flawlessly, but. Yeah, it seems like it's working. It picked out this one email address. Uh, but one thing I wanna try is, what if we have multiple email addresses in the same string? So let's say, um, I'm gonna slide this over so I have a little bit more room. Uh, what if we have, okay, your name, um, 888 at uh, company.net. 
something like that. That's that doesn't make sense because a company is supposed to have dot com. Um, but yeah, whatever. So let's try to run this and see what happens. It should pick out both of these, right? It should say match equals this and match equals this. Let's hit run. Hmm. But match only has the first email address. But what happened to the second email address? Well, let's try to delete this first email address and see what happens. Delete, 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 delete. Oh, feels good. Destruction. <laughs> um, and now let's run it. And as you can see, it actually picked out this email address, your name 888company.net. Well, what what gives? It seems like the regular expression that we wrote here is is picking out this correctly, but it's not um it's not picking out both of them. Well, the thing is, uh, the search function actually only f searches for the first occurrence, like I said earlier. It only searches for the first occurrence of, of your match. If you actually want to find all of them, you can actually do that by just calling find all. Um, I really want to dr uh, drill this home to you because if you want to find everything, then you need to remember to use this function instead of the other one. Uh, it's a mistake I've made before. So if we do this now, it should actually pick up both email addresses. Let's give it a shot, run, and as you can see, it returns a nice clean Python list of both matches, both email addresses. That's cool, right? So um, it looks like in like literally five lines of code, we actually have a email address text scraper. Pretty cool, man. Um, some other things we could actually add to this is I believe in email addresses, you can actually have um, periods and underscores and whatnot. So that's literally as simple as adding um, a period or a dash or an underscore in here. And um, I don't think you have to escape these if it's within the brackets. If it's within the brackets, it's already um, considered it is what it is. Uh, I may be wrong, but we'll test it if it works. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um, same thing here. Uh, I don't know if you can have um, that here, but let, uh, let's just try this and let's maybe add like uh, uh, your name, let's add an underscore or actually your dot or your name dot 8-8-8. Now let's see what matches this time. Let's click run. And oh, something went wrong. Um, maybe we do have to escape the dash. Let's try that. Yeah, that's what it was. I think we do need to escape everything in here. Uh, yep, okay, that fixed it. So you actually do need to escape everything. So now it's actually picking out this email address just fine the entire thing. Let's change it back to what we had before just to make sure it's still working as expected. Your name dot eight dash eight dash eight run and it looks like it's picking out the entire thing. Pretty cool guys, pretty cool. So yeah, you do need to escape these special symbols even if it's within brackets. You need to put these backslashes before it to actually treat it as a period, actually treat this as a dash and then actually treat this as an underscore. You gotta escape them. Um, for that matter, you might even want to escape the ampersand. Would that? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe that too, if, if ampersand is a special character. Sometimes it's a little bit confusing whether you need to escape or not. But if you're ever getting weird errors when you're dealing with strings and you're trying to parse str string, strings like this, um, try escaping the, the special characters and sometimes that'll, that'll fix the problem or unescape them. It's, it's a very uh, weird, layered, convoluted kind of thing, but Yep, it's just a part of uh, learning this this crazy Aztec language. Yep, I just taught you guys how to speak Aztec. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, uh, it seems like we have a fully functioning uh, email scraper now with uh, this added functionality. So pretty simple, right? Five lines of code. Took a little um, a little while to get here, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Just these uh, these simple five lines, and that just kind of shows the uh, power of regular expressions. We're able to detect all different kinds of things with. Uh, one single line of uh, weird symbols, pretty much. So uh, that kind of demonstrates the value of it. Uh, I'm sure Python's very happy to have it within its library um, if it was sentient. But yeah, very useful tool. Um, I'll probably be touching on this more in the future. This was only like a general introduction to it, but um, there's a lot of things you can do more with this. There's a uh, just a lot. Uh, perhaps I'll go into it in the future, but for now, that is all you guys. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, still new to this, getting better slowly. But yeah, hope you guys like watching it. Um, stay tuned for more. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Good.
Bye.